Today in the news, the 3070 Ti, or 16GB, whatever you want to call it, is born, Intel's pricing is leakier than a faucet, and AMD joins Nvidia on the dark side. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with Nvidia, and by Nvidia, I mean a fellow YouTuber who once again broke Nvidia's rules. Now you remember a few months ago when a YouTuber called Vic decided to upgrade his 2070 to go from 8GB of GDDR6 to 16? Well, it worked last time, but unfortunately it didn't perform very well in benchmarking. It was something like 20% slower than a regular 2070. Well, the mad lad decided to try again this time with an RTX 3070. Yes, my friend, you have your first or second look if you've already seen the video at an RTX 3070 16 gigabytes. So what's interesting about this? Well, first of all, the RTX 3070 Ti or 16 gigabyte has been a rumor for a long time. And this mod proves that it was actually considered as an option. You see, you can't just take bigger VRAM or more VRAM chips and just tack them onto a GPU and expect it to work. Everything needs to work together or have worked together before for it to work on a modded card. Things like the brand of memory chips, the VRAM timings, the jumpers on the board, or the VBIOS and drivers, they all have to be in line. And that's exactly what Vic the modder painstakingly figured out while testing new configurations. Once everything was soldered and the card booted, he benchmarked it and it was absolutely awful. It scored more like an RTX 3060 than a 3070. And that's pretty bad considering it's about a 35% decrease in performance. But after taking some suggestions from his audience, he was able to exceed a 3070 Founders Edition score by a few points. Which means that he did it. He actually improved performance with bigger VRAM. So is there still a chance that this 3070 16 gigabyte will make its way into retail? I don't know. Reports say that it's been canceled, but maybe closer to the middle of this year with a super refresh. But right now it looks like no. Also, don't try this at home unless you're Lewis Rossman. Next up, let's talk Intel. Thanks to an early listing by a Canadian distributor, we now have the Canadian pricing for the entire Rocket Lake CPU lineup. We also have the US prices, but uh, we'll talk about the Canadian prices and show you the US prices too. It looks like there are going to be 14 models available at or near launch, which is a lot less than the 26 current Comet Lake desktop processors. That's not even counting the Pentium and Celeron models, just the Comet Lake. If we compare the Canadian new pricing to the last generation, the price premium is pretty damn big. I'll mention the relevant ones, but take a look. From the 10400F to the 11400F, F, it's 18.2% more expensive. As you can see, not much has changed between the 10400 to the 10600KF to the 10600K, which is 4.5% uh, more expensive. Then we get to the i7s, which are averaging about 10 to 18% more expensive. Take a look at this 11700F, it's 18.7% more expensive. Then to the i9, and we get up to 24.5% more expensive for the 11900KF. I mean, high prices on the unlocked K models kind of makes sense, but they are ripping you off more than usual on all of the F models without an IGP. The pricing on the regular chips like the 10400, 500, 600, and 900 is actually pretty good. Now, big price premiums make sense if there is a corresponding performance increase, but right now, Rocket Lake performance isn't looking that great. Anand Tech recently posted a complete review of the i7 11700K before embargo. Like they had a retail chip, not an engineering sample. And its performance was pretty disappointing. It consistently was behind the Ryzen 5800X, but the problem is it even gets beaten by its last generation counterpart, the 10700K. And to put insult to injury, in some workloads, it pulled over 290 watts, which is insane for a small mainstream processor. Intel, you gotta fix those prices. What do you guys think? Let me know down below. Speaking of things that might hurt the gamer, we got AMD. 
Last week, you might have heard through the interwebs that AMD might follow in the footsteps of Nvidia and start their own lineup of mining GPUs, specifically RDNA 1 mining GPUs. This card was found in AMD's updated drivers and it was referred to as a new Navi 12 SKU. Navi 12 was only used in Apple products, which means AMD might be repurposing some of their Apple GPUs into cryptocurrency mining. What's interesting is that this Navi 12 GPU is literally the same specs as the RX 50. 700 XT, except with HBM memory. Funny enough, even with HBM, Apple kind of crippled the chip specs, making the memory bandwidth slower than a 5700 XT. But of course, if AMD wants to sell them to miners, they're gonna unlock that bandwidth. It's going to be interesting to see if someone will end up cracking those mining cards to make them work with CPUs that have integrated graphics for gaming. I know it was done with the mining version of the GTX 1060 a while ago, and I just don't want them to end up in a landfill. Anyways, guys, that is pretty much it for the catch up. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Drop a like if you liked it, a comment if you wanna talk about today's stories. I got new hats incoming, so just uh, pay attention to the videos. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.